Good evening. Um, it's really pleasure to introduce the young um, he's all educated in the United States, but he's been the one of the most interesting, I would say, um, youngest generation of architects practicing in Tokyo. Um, and it's also this is the first time he offered a lecture in London. So I'm really excited to see his works. And although the title suggests paper tube construction, but I think his kind of capacity of the design is very really bridges from very really small scale to very really social concepts. So uh, he was telling me he's not only showing paper structures, but much wider context, which includes some kind of uh, temporary housing set provided for Koga also temporary shed, which have kind of demonstrated some individual architects within the context of social implication, which is um, very rare to see in Japan. So I'm very proud, as also as a, one of, I believe, I'm Japanese architects, but on the other hand, how he really practice in international scale. It's also we see um, his works in, exhibited in Hayward Gallery recently. Also, he is also as a collaborator with um, Philip, uh, I, I, I can't f still pronounce his family name, but Guamachun, yes, sorry, yeah. And Stephen Spence is uh, making an um, installation for inside Millennium Dome, which we um, would like, we'll be able to see it next year. Also, he has another project in Frankfurt in Germany. Hanover, Hanover sorry. It's also year 2000 world expositions for Japanese pavilion. So, but the rest, I think we could witness kind of long span of the work rather than I begin some introduction. So please welcome Shigeru Ban. Thank you. Thank you, Shin and uh, Morrison uh, for inviting me to such a wonderful occasion. Um, as uh, Shin introduced me briefly, uh, I'm maybe a little bit known as uh, the uh, architect to use uh, paper as a building structural element. Uh, so somebody called me paper architect, but paper architect used to mean that the architect who never built. <laughs> but uh, I'm an uh, architect for building the architecture by paper. Uh, but uh, the paper chip architecture is only one part of my uh, uh, work. I'm also using concrete, steel, uh, wood, anything. And uh, also that uh, I'm, I do uh, some volunteer uh, work for some disaster area. Um, today, I'd like to include some of the social activity I'm doing. Uh, when I I went to the United States to study architecture at Cooper Union, and I came back to Japan right after I graduated from Cooper Union in 1985. And I was really shocked to know that uh, in Japan, architects are not well uh, respected in, generally, in general. Um, then I thought, why? Uh, one of the reasons I thought was the uh, history of architects in Japan. We uh, just start westernizing, or we just opened the port about 120 years ago. Before that, the, uh, we didn't have any architect. All the uh, traditional building was designed and built by carpenters. So none of the name of architects remain in Japan. So we have a very short uh, history of architects in Japan. So general public doesn't have an idea what the architect is doing. And uh, I thought that is one of the biggest uh, reason why architects are not uh, respected in Japan. But it was wrong. When I experienced the, uh, the period, so-called bubble period, it's kind of economical booming, uh, end of uh, 80s to uh, beginning of 90s. Uh, architects were, most of architects were very interested in just making a monument to show their e ego. And uh, also, uh, people are helping uh, developers to make money. And I'm not quite ob uh, objective to make a monument because it's very important uh, the part of role as an architect to make a nice uh, landscape of the whole city. Um, however, it's very interesting phenomenon. 
part of the phenomena of the modern architects, including masters like Kuroko Bize or Miss Vandero, before those uh, modern architects, the, the architect was really working for only for privileged people, like a king or a religious groups. And then uh, after the Industrial Revolution, uh, the many people came to the city. So we needed really inexpensive social houses or big apartment. And uh, even after the wars, many people lost their houses. So the, the masters, even Rukovice, started designing factory-made, prefabricated houses for general public. That kind of the, uh, the activity was very uh, uh, it's the first time for architect to start working for general public. And uh, maybe after the 1980s, when we finished the Cold War, there's so many disasters happening all over the world. Like the man-made disaster, like uh, the Rwanda disaster uh, crisis, uh, the this, uh, war between the different tribes. Even uh, we are involved in the Kosovo crisis. There's so many man-made disasters happening. Many people are losing their houses, and they are displaced. And also, there are many uh, natural disasters happening, like Kobe, 1995, big earthquake. It's not only Kobe, all over the world. There are many earthquake, flooding. And there are so many uh, disaster, natural disasters happening, and pe people are dis displaced or losing houses. And uh, that time, only the, the industrialized, very poor tent or prefabricated houses houses are uh, provided. But there are so many uh, places for architects to improve the, the real situations. And uh, I'm very interested in to work for such a project too. So today I like to start from uh, my area work right after I came back from the United States. Uh, I started my own practice without working for any architects. Of course, uh, uh, I didn't have any working uh, experiences. So I started uh, designing exhibitions. Uh, slide, please. This is a, a second exhibition I designed. Uh, this is an exhibition for Alba Ardo. Uh, the exhibition was uh, brought from MoMA in New York. Uh, Alba Ardo is one of the, my favorite architects and I've been traveling many times in Finland uh, what, looking at his architectures. And uh, I wanted to uh, design the installation showing the uh, spirit of uh, Arto. However, because of limited budget for installation, I couldn't use uh, timbers, wood, to make uh, Arto like a space. And also, uh, because of the very short uh, period of the exhibition, only three weeks, I hated to waste the material after we dismantled the exhibition. So I looked for some alternative material to replace wood. Um, the before this exhibition, I designed the exhibition for Emilio Ambras. I designed some uh, screens to hang from the ceiling. When the screens was uh, hung, uh, brought to the, the place, the always screen fabric is rolled on paper tube. The paper tube is like a the paper tube you will see in the toilet paper or fax roll. Uh, it's very dirty things made by recycled paper. Uh, after we hung all the screens for Amber's uh, uh, exhibition, I uh, kept a lot of paper tube in my studio because I really hate, hate to waste material. And when I was looking for the, the, the alternative material for Alba Alto exhibition, uh, I thought this paper tube can be used uh, to replace wood. So I visited the factory uh, to study the, the, the uh, character of the paper tube. And I knew that we can get the, any thickness or any diameter or almost endless length of the paper tube very inexpensively. So I used the, ah, where is the, ah, here. Yeah. So I used the paper tube, uh, small diameter for the uh, seating, like Alberto's uh, Beepley's library. And even the little bit bigger paper chip was used for the freestanding wall. And this uh, uh, pedestal is used for the paper chip legs. And even the, this uh, tile work, like this half cut paper chip, was put on the existing post as Alberto does. So this is the first time I ever used the paper chip for, for the for interior. Then the next, please. Then I designed some villa. Uh, 
because I didn't have any working experience, only a uh, style I can use was experience or inference from my school, Copy Union. I was taught by John Hader, Peter Eisenman, and the uh, so-called New York Five people. So being of my career, I was very interested in only manipulating the, the, the geometries and uh, articulating the, the different functional walls, like this one. Even stone was used just as the, uh, the making clear uh, uh, articulation of three different walls. Next, please. Uh, you will see the strong influence from New York Five, and the always cylinder carries at, uh, some uh, water space, kitchen, bathroom, and this is just uh, the, geom uh, the manipulation of the geom geometries. Next, please. And this is small building uh, using three walls: blue wall, contain hall space, and uh, along the this black wall. The circulation stair and the corridor, and uh, along the pink wall, there are the kitchen and bathrooms. It's all sa same ideas. Next, please. It's still uh, the the same things. The, the in inside of the, this uh, the, the cylinder, the kitchen, the bathroom, and this uh, f fireplace support the roof. Next, please. And little by little, uh, I started uh, using structure as a part of my design. This is a small studio and house for the uh, couple of the vocalist. Still, uh, the, the, the composition of the cylinder and the square uh, core to support concrete uh, uh, waffle slab. This waffle slab is quite different from the regular waffle slab. Uh, the regular waffle section of regular waffle slab is rectangular. In order to uh, save the, a lot of labor cost to make formwork or for concrete roof, I just made a very simple pyramid shape of the, uh, the form by plywood. And uh, also, I can invite light from the top of the, the pyramid. These are the natural light from the ceiling. Next, please. Uh, as you see, still I'm using the same idea again and again, the, 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 these two concrete cantilevered core uh, supporting the, the wooden roof. And uh, the front facade is just brick, uh, freestanding brick. Next, please. So just f this f uh, brick wall is uh, separated from the, the roof. And uh, this is just uh, the wooden roof supported by two cantilevered concrete core. Next, please. Then uh, I really tried hard to get out from the uh, influence from, of my school. Um, <laughs> this time I just used two walls instead of three walls, here and here, parallelly, parallel to the uh, edge of the, the site. Um, so west and the south side, west and the east side of the, uh, the building over here, the next door, which I, I don't want to see, but a good view from the south side and also north side. So I wanted to keep the south and the west side open as much as possible without having any uh, wall or uh, diagonal bracing. Because this is a con con uh, steel con uh, wooden construction, and there was especially in Japan, we have a lot of problem of earthquake. We have to take care of the strong uh, horizontal load. So instead of uh, making the bracing, uh, I just made uh, uh, some cable. It's very difficult to see. Pulling the, uh, the wall and the beam to the ground, both sides. So because of the two walls, it's very strong for the, uh, let's say, this x, di x directions. And uh, no wall for y direction. So I pulled the, by cable for y di uh, x direction for the uh, horizontal load. Next, please. As you see this picture, because of that uh, device of the structure, there are no brace or no walls. So that's why we can see <coughs> through from the south to, to north without any uh, uh, wall or uh, bracing. Uh, also, I'm using structural idea into design. I'm not interested in so-called high-tech design to show detail or uh, the structural uh, element 
as a part of the design, I always try to hide uh, the structure idea behind. Just as to me, structure idea is uh, the, the supporting system to gain some sort, of some kind of the space. Next, please. This is an apartment building made of concrete. And generally, the, the, the in concrete, there are two kinds of structure, post and beam structure, also bearing wall system. Uh, generally, bearing wall system is cheaper than post and beam structure. Um, here, again, I use the two, two wall system, parallel wall. For example, if you take a look, this bay, the wall is only the, the y direction this way, and the no, there are no wall y, uh, x direction. But if you take a look this bay, the wall is only x direction and no wall for y directions. So if you see that, that each bay, uh, structurally, the, the bearing wall is only one direction, it's, so is there, it's really weak for the uh, earthquake, horizontal load. However, that, uh, the horizontal uh, load was brought, uh, transferred by this concrete slab. So although the each bay has uh, on lacking of the wall, but uh, if we calculate the whole uh, necessary uh, the area of the wall, uh, I could put enough wall area into the building. However, the each bay has only one way of the, the walls. So like this is north direction. There are no bearing wall on, uh, on the north facade. And each apartment can share, uh, use their own private roof on top of the, uh, the, the, uh, the rooftop. Next, please. So even uh, south uh, facade, there are no bearing walls because of the idea of this structure. Next, please. This is a factory uh, using same idea of a two-wall system. However, it's not two-wall. It's a two-parallel uh, frame, steel frame here and here. And also because of the, uh, the, the, the function of the, the factory, I have to put heavy machines in main area. And uh, I used precasted T section, uh, uh, precasted concrete uh, floor. Um, then usually, uh, using the, this kind of precasted concrete floor, we have to stop the, this street. We have to close the street put to put the big crane to hang the uh, precasted floor above this floor, for, uh, above this frame, to put one by one. But somehow I knew that uh, we cannot close this street, so I had to do something else. So my idea was the making this two steel frame individually, so this is the cantilevered from the ground. There are no cross beam uh, transferring the, the horizontal movement from frame to frame. So be, before we put this concrete frame, two uh, individual f steel frame stand by itself and uh, the no, nothing in between. All that bracing was put in both sides. Then we can put very small crane in between the, the, the frame to put this uh, prefabricated T-shape uh, frame uh, floor one by one. Then crane can go backward to get up from, from the frame. So because of the negative situation of the, the street existing condition, I thought of, I got this idea to make a two separate frame uh, into the design. Next, please. So because of this uh, precasted floor is not transferring any horizontal uh, load from frame to frame, it's just pin. It's just put on the, on the frame. It's very e simple uh, connections. Next, please. This is a house for dentist. Uh, still, I'm using two wall system. And uh, the client, this is a, the, the office and house for the dentist. Client asked me to design three story building in con by concrete. But when I uh, checked uh, the soil condition, the soil condition was very weak. And uh, in order to build three story concrete building, I had to put concrete pile and in the ground to reach the certain uh, the strong uh, f uh, surface of the ground. But I really hate to use a concrete pile because it costs a lot and uh, make a construction period longer. And also it's very noisy for neighbor. So 
in order to avoid concrete pile construction, I try to make uh, the weight of the building as small as possible, so that the the the, the, the place I use the concrete as uh, minimum, like this wall back there and front up here, and also there are one cylinder core inside, and the rest of the floor is made by wood construction. Like here, um, the, the, um, uh, we can see the section of the uh, laminated timber beam, and. Uh, so, same as uh, the factory, this two wall is standing by cantilevers. So, this uh, timber is not uh, joint, uh, transforming the, the, the horizontal road. So, because of cantilever, the thickness of the wall is becoming smaller and smaller. Where the, the thickness becomes smaller, I put the, the I rested uh, laminated timber uh, in the, the uh, difference of the wall thickness. Um, and also the w other things I was thinking about the, the building is the context of how to use the context of uh, the uh, particular site. If you take a look at the uh, example of uh, Tadao Ando's uh, houses, that is one of the way uh, to to uh, use the context. He feel that the now in Japan the. The, the, it's really crowded and uh, noisy, and he always put a uh, concrete wall around the, the edge of the site to keep very nice courtyard inside of the building. So it's very close to the outside. But I still feel that the condition of the city, even in Tokyo, is not too bad. Even this place, I can see that a uh, uh, nice cherry blossom, this is, is reserved in city. And uh, still, we can see nice uh, sunset. So I always try to uh, open the, the house as much as possible. And I put a uh, minimum uh, number of the, the wall or screens, depending on the, uh, the condition. So here is the facing to the street, busy street. So the wall is very uh, closed. But here, uh, facing to the neighbor, I have to keep certain privacy for the house. But uh, instead of making the blank concrete wall, I made a three-story uh, uh, ivy screens to keep the privacy, but it's kind of translucent. So the wind and light come through. And even for the neighbor, um, it must, must be much better to have the green wall than the, the blank concrete wall. So I tried to uh, the use the existing condition into design as much as possible. I divided the narrow side four meter and four meter, and uh, I put the, the each rooms linearly so that every room has the same view of the cherry blossom and uh, light. Uh, next, please. So in plan, the wall is concrete wall is on, only here and here, and also this uh, the cantilever uh, core receiving. Uh, Tim laminated timber in half. Next, please. I always try to uh, connect inside and outside uh, together. Uh, so this is the concrete wall back of the, the site and uh, the supporting the just horizontal, uh, hori uh, not horizontal, vertical load from the beam. Next, please. This is a summer house called Double Roof House, House of Double Roof. Um, I have been designing a couple of the, the, the sum, summer houses in uh, snow countries. Always the problem is how to take care of the snow load. Always the only for the, the, snow, uh, the snow accumulation is only for a few months in year. However, we have to take care of the snow accumulation and always uh, uh, the beam become very big, so roof become very heavy because of the uh, accumulation of the snow. But mainly that the house, uh, summer house is used in summer. So I wanted to make the, the house very as light as possible. And also that the, because tight of the, uh, the limited budget, I want to make very inexpensive, inexpensively. So what I did is that I just put uh, corrugated steel roof, it's very inexpensive material, to receive all snow load. 
so the second roof become free from the, the, the snow load, so it's become very thin, just the thickness of the, the insulation. And uh, when I uh, put the corrugated the plate roof, usually people just take a look at the catalog of the ma uh, manufacturer and put uh, to see that some di uh, uh, to, s to find out the thickness and depth of the, the roof by the chart. But I always calculate the corrugated roof as a beam. When we calculate the corrugated roof or beam, first of all, we have to check the bending moment. When we have the biggest snow accumulations, uh, it have to be okay for the bending moment. And after bending moment is okay, then we have to check deflection. Uh, as you see that the deflection is the biggest in center of the, the beam. If the, the, the deflection is more than three centimeter or more than one three hundred of the length of, length of the span, we have to choose one bigger size of the roof or uh, the beam. But then I thought it's very waste of the uh, material choosing the bigger the beam only for the uh, deflection, even though that the bending moment is okay. Then I thought, what is the deflection? What what's happening if deflection is over than the limit? The, the one of the problem of the deflection is usually ceiling is hung from the roof. So if deflection is too big, the, the, the roof uh, ceiling comes down or some, some cracks. However, the, if the ceiling is disconnected from the, the, the roof, if that is not hung from the roof, even the deflection over three centimeter is not problem for the, 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 uh, the, for the ceiling. So then, uh, so because I separate the second roof or second uh, main ceiling uh, from the, 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 the first roof, so this becomes free uh, for the, 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 the live load. And so I could just use a uh, thinnest uh, corrugated roof just okay for the bending moment, but uh, it's over the deflection. That's why the, the structure is very light. And also that I use uh, scaffolding uh, pipe for the post and beam, so that the, even carpenter can assemble this house. And also I use a very inexpensive cement panels, so on. Next, please. So this is just scaffolding pipe and just pin joint. All the, the, the bracing is underneath of the, 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 the floor. Next, please. Um, this is the four sliding doors. Usually, the sliding door remains here, but I put the rail outside so that the, the all the, the folding, uh, sliding door goes out so we can keep the uh, open uh, from uh, post to the wall to connect outside, inside, uh, totally. Next, please. This is a house I call a furniture house. When we experienced the, the terrible earthquake in Kobe, uh, many people was injured, was even killed by, uh, falling, the the, uh, by falling the furniture and they are underneath. Also, that many people saved their life because they are in between very strong furniture and even when uh, the roof fall down on the people, because people are in between the furniture, they saved their life. So furniture is very strong uh, to save their, pe uh, to, to kill the people or to save the life of the pe people. So then I thought uh, how strong furniture is. Then I designed, I calculated, and I tested the strength of the, the furniture then I knew that the furniture is strong enough to support the, the, the to become the, the, the structure of the, the house. So this house has, the, there are no wall or no post. The, the, all the structural element is uh, the factory made cabinet or bookshelf. Uh, this is a standard unit. The width is 90 centimeter and height is uh, two meter 40. And the depth is uh, depending on the function of the furniture. Uh, I'm just uh, showing this installation of the, 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 the cabinet already. And outside wall and inside is already painted in the factory. Next, please. So this is an uh, 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 election procedure. 
Um, generally, in Japan, there are two types of very popular uh, prefabricated housing system. One is a two by four wall system. We build walls in the factory and we bring into the site to assemble. And also the other system is a unit system. We make steel frame rooms uh, like a containers and then assemble and uh, stack each other. Uh, the, the both system requires a uh, heavy uh, truck uh, trailer to bring to the site. Also we need a big crane in the site to assemble those as a unit. But unfortunately in Japan, the street is uh, very narrow and the site is very small. There are no space for the crane. This system, each furniture uh, weight about 100 kilogram. So it's very easy to bring into the site and even that the people can move by themselves to the, the right position. Next, please. Then uh, after we bring in the furniture, the, we have to connect the furniture with the foundation and also connecting the furniture and furniture with each other. And uh, we can put some uh, electrical, elect electrical wiring inside of the insulations before we close the inside the panel. Next, please. In one day, this all the structural element are uh, already built. And inside, outside is already painted. And uh, we don't need the uh, carpenters. Uh, the all the, the cabinet are made in factory by machines. And uh, we don't waste too many material to bring out. Next day, we just connect, we just put the pre-cut beam and connect the, the, uh, the uh, furniture for in-plane stiffness. Next, please. Then we have to put windows, some uh, floors, so election, uh, construction period become very short and we don't have to depend on the skill of the carpenters. Next, please. So whatever you see uh, vertically, even this bookshelf is a structural bookshelf made in factory. So everything is, is made by cabinet and bookshelves. Now recently I completed the second story of, the, the, of the, this uh, system. Even staircase, kitchen, everything is made in factory. Next, please. Uh, left hand side, this is a house called curtain wall house. Uh, because the edge of the building, the, uh, the skin is made by curtain. And as you know, the curtain wall was invented by Miss van der Rohe. As you see in the right hand side, this is the van der Rohe's house, one of my favorite house. And uh, this is one of the, uh, uh, this is the uh, first time in Western uh, architecture history to skin become totally transparent by using the glass. Uh, so it's visually totally, visually transparent. However, most of the glass is fixed and uh, sm only small doors and window. So the, the physically, you cannot, the inside and outside is not connected. So to, uh, the physically, it's not transparent. But if you see uh, the Japanese traditional uh, housing, uh, when, if we opened up all the sliding doors, the visually, it's become totally transparent from inside, outside, outside, inside. And also, the physically, inside and outside is connected. So that is the difference of the transparency in Japanese traditional architecture and uh, Miss transparency. And when I visited the, the client before we built this house, uh, client was living in very old traditional Japanese house, enjoying transparency of the Japanese uh, li lifestyle. And so I wanted to keep uh, that kind of uh, transparency or lifestyle of my client into the, my new building. So in order to compare the mis-transparency or mis-invention of the curtain wall, I just made a curtain wall, curtain outside edge to show the Japanese way of transparency. And the, the inside of the, uh, the terrace, we have a glass sliding door to, to close and we can uh, tie up, we can store the, the, the curtain in case of the, the, the typhoon. Next, please. So this can be totally closed. 
and uh, even just I uh, even curtain can connect it to the floor like this. But I just took a picture to show the function of the curtain. Next, please. So this can be totally open. Also, it can be closed. And uh, outside terrace and inside, even the, the second floor are connected totally. Next, please. This is a house called Two Fifths House. The reason of this name is the, uh, this site is almost rectangular. And the size is this 25 meter by 15 meter and the two concrete walls parallelly here and here. I divided the, s the building into the five rectangle, four meter by 15 meter. And uh, this is a street over here. And uh, the, this is a, a front courtyard and living space and inner courtyard and some other uh, rooms and uh, back courtyard. So in Inside space, outside space is re repeated. And uh, where, uh, where you see the dot line, this is all sliding door, which goes out of the wall like uh, my previous project. So if I open the old sliding door, wall to the wall become totally uh, open to outside courtyard. And this is the first uh, screen over here. In order to keep the privacy, I bent it, hold it, the, the punched open aluminum metal to, keep, to, to bear, to stand for the wind pressure. But also that here is some uh, the, like accordion type of the, the, uh, the opening for the, the, the garage underneath. It could be open. And, uh, but because of the angle of the, the punching opening, you cannot see straight, but you can see the, the sky or the, the ground. Next, please. So uh, in order to uh, have an in, inner space on the ground floor, I put the two glass box on uh, second floor, a uh, first floor. So this is also the, uh, the comparison of the uh, Mies. This is very much like a Mies glass house. In order to make the, the clear comparison of the Mies transparency, and uh, Japanese type of uh, transparency, I on purposely put uh, miss like the glass box on top. When uh, the old sliding door is out, uh, the all the space outside to inside, outside is connected. So I call this kind of space uh, the uh, uh, universal floor instead of universal uh, space. Uh, because all the floor is connected and uh, the how you divide is depending on the sliding door or uh, the, the furniture. Next, please. Uh, this is the view from the bathroom. You can go out to the, the inner courtyard or living room directory from bathroom. And uh, this uh, the movable uh, membrane can close the courtyard to make semi-open uh, space inside. Next, please. This is uh, the end of the wall, this uh, three-story IB screen again. And uh, this is the basement, it's a library. Next, please. Uh, Left-hand side, this is a ha uh, the summer house I call Wallless House. And right-hand side, this is another my favorite of the uh, Miss uh, Barcelona Pavilion. After this Barcelona Pavilion was reconstructed, I went to there a couple of times. And it's really amazing architecture. But if you take a look very carefully, structurally, it's very ambiguous. Like, you know, the always uh, famous cross-section uh, columns is so close to the uh, walls here, and even here. So I wonder the, the meaning or uh, function of the post and the walls. Is this... Uh, uh, this wall is bearing wall. Is this carrying the, the horizontal force or a vertical force? About this post is carrying its rigid connection, or what is the function? Or what is the meaning of the structural meaning of the each structural element? It's very ambiguous. So in this my project, Wallless House, I try to uh, 
reconsider uh, the meaning of the, uh, the structural element, post and, and the walls. Uh, it's, the site is the, the, the on the hill. Next, please. So uh, instead of making the uh, floor floating on the hill, I just, this is a hill, I just <coughs> digged the, the, uh, the land to take the uh, mud uh, land out to, to put a uh, flat surface here. So only half of the uh, hill was uh, digged to, to make a sp uh, floor, uh, plain floor because I didn't want to uh, remove the, the, the soil from the land from the site to outside and it's cost more. And uh, because of that uh, uh, pressure from the, 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 the hill, this wall have to be uh, the bearing wall or it have to be cantilevered concrete wall. But this is not wall. This is a part of the floor, continuous floor. And uh, this, because it's curved, it's uh, upside down of the arch. All the, 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 the pressure of the soil is transferred naturally to the, the floor. So that because of this arch effect, this doesn't have to be strong bearing uh, cantilevered concrete wall. This could be just thick, thin uh, floor, part of the floor. So that there are so many uh, the, the cost saving and also this is uh, not wall, this is a uh, part of the floor. And uh, there are other el structural element is three posts here, here, here. It's very thin diameter, only 55 millimeter. In Japan, because of the earthquake, a strong horizontal load have to be taken care of. This is impossible to make a, such a, a small diameter of the post. So visually, obviously, this is not taking care of any horizontal load. And uh, all the horizontal load, we made uh, the, I made uh, this roof uh, in plain stiffed and connected to this floor rigidly so that all the horizontal movement is transferred to the floor. That's why this three seam post doesn't receive any horizontal movement. That's why this diameter is uh, 55 millimeter is enough to carry only uh, vertical load. And uh, the, all the, the floor is open, even the bathroom and toilet, everything is open, depending on the occasion. And uh, you can close it uh, in case you have a guest. And uh, this is the kitchen. Next, please. Um, this is a movable uh, closet, and uh, you can close the toilet by sliding doors. And uh, you can close, you can divide living space and also bedroom to two space by sliding door. Also, if you divide the, the, the space, bedroom by this uh, movable cabinet, you can have uh, some guest uh, bedroom here. And so it's really up to the occasion. And by the way, these furniture are uh, also made of paper, uh, manufactured by an Italian manufacturer called Cappellini. And uh, this is a, a main brain. Uh, uh, it's, it's usually when the paper is not here or during winter, this is a close. It's, uh, it covers the, uh, the glass windows. When, when people come here, just hung to make a canopy to feel the, the, the movement of the wind and also the shadow. Next, please. Um, this is a house called Nine Square, nine square Grid House. Obviously, uh, the house square plan divided into the nine squares. And also horizontal, the layout of the cabinet contain all space uh, containers and uh, electrical, electrical things and uh, um, air conditioning unit. And, uh, where you see that line, there's a sliding doors. This can be go out as usual. Like this, the sliding glass door goes out. Even this sliding door goes out. Uh, here is the bathroom and the kitchen. And the, the, the rest of the space has no name. You don't have to name it's a bedroom or a dining room or kitchen. It's really dependent on occasion. Next, please. 
So this is uh, the, the two pictures was taken from the same place, same view. Uh, when all the sliding door goes out, this becomes totally one square space. Even bed is all uh, exposed, kitchen, uh, bathroom is uh, b behind the, the, the kitchen, it's exposed. But also you can divide the space. Uh, there are so many ways of dividing the square or long rectangular. In case you have uh, you fight with your, your wife, you can make uh, two bedrooms. And in the winter, you can move the, your bed to the uh, south part, and or in summer, you can move the, your bed to the winter. So it's really depending on the occasion. And uh, uh, next, please. So this is also taken from the same uh, angle. Uh, room are divided like this, uh, very na narrow uh, rectangle. It's bathroom is over here. Uh, I don't ha we didn't have to design the, the, the room for children because this is a house for gay couple. <laughs> <laughs> Next, please. Uh, this is uh, the house apartment. Uh, it's so-called Swiss cheese apartment. Uh, this is a floor plan. And this is uh, the site. Um, this is a kind of the forest, and I decide not to cut any trees. And uh, however, the, the, the position of the trees are really arbitrary. There are no order. Uh, in order to make the, the steel framework very inex economically, I had to find some kind of uh, regular grid into this forest. Uh, but however, in, not in order, not in order to cut the, the, the trees uh, or uh, the roots, um, any rectangle or square grid didn't fit into this uh, orbital uh, position of the trees. Then finally, I found the, the triangle grid, four meter by four meter. And there's uh, six columns, uh, six beams meet to one point. So I knew that there's so many freedom uh, of uh, uh, removing the beam or, or even removing some of the, the foundation beam depending on the position of the roots and the trees, branches. Next, please. So this is a view from the, the sky. And this is the winter. The, the, the leaves gone. But in the summer, all the leaves uh, cover the roof. So it's very good for the insulations. So there's many holes uh, for the trees. Uh, actually, there are no uh, vertical uh, drainage. Because the, if, uh, if I made the drainage, the, it's always drainage is stuck by the leaves. And also, the, the, the putting the, uh, the horizontal uh, vertical drainage is breaking the, the design. So uh, it's very difficult to see. But I put some kind of the, the, the system, uh, the, all the water goes to the, the uh, branch of the, the trees. So trees works as a the vertical drainage. So since I saved the life of the trees, uh, the trees have to uh, have the <laughs> some uh, role of the, the architecture. <laughs> Next, please. Uh, on the ground floor, um, I wanted to keep the uh, uh, feeling of walking through the forest. And there are 11 units of the houses. Uh, each house has uh, three stories, and each house has uh, the uh, entrance uh, on the ground floor. So on the ground floor, there are only a few uh, rooms. But where I have some uh, s space on the ground floor, I put some uh, grass, uh, mirror grass, or some rear mirror to reflect the trees, uh, to, s to avoid the, the existence of the, uh, the, the uh, volume on the ground floor. Next, please. Uh, so now I'm getting into the uh, paper, paper tube architecture. This is the second exhibition I designed for uh, Emilio Ambrose. Um, this is traveling exhibition from California to Mexico, Italy, and other places. Because of the uh, traveling, uh, I have to make the, uh, the installation design as light as possible. Also, the uh, election procedure uh, has to be very easy for anybody to, as to assemble. 
So what I did is uh, I made uh, this panel using the square section paper tube, and also the, the paper honeycomb. Uh, depth is about 25 millimeter. So if you s see straight the, the paper honeycomb, this is transparent. But if you see from an angle, because of the depth of the, the paper honeycomb, you don't see through inside. Then the, this is the hinge. Just you have to open and you put a uh, plexiglass box to stiffen, stiffen the whole structure. Even his model was on, uh, put on, onto the paper tube legs. If you see carefully, the diameter of the paper tube are different. Uh, in order to make the, 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 the uh, transportation uh, uh, things smaller, so each paper tube is nested into the uh, other paper tubes uh, because diameter is different, so it can be nested. Next, please. <coughs> this is the uh, second, actually, first one was very small, second paper tube architecture. However, in order to use uh, paper tube as a structural element, uh, we have to get government permission. In Japan, because of the earthquake, um, there are only three structural uh, material is used as a stru uh, structural element, steel, concrete, and wood. Even brick and uh, stone are not allowed to use for the stru structure in Japan because of the earthquake. And, and uh, even paper chip are not allowed to use uh, uh, the structural element anywhere in the world. So I had to do the many testing. I have to do the, the, the permission the procedure to get permission. But uh, I didn't have uh, time and money to do such a complicated procedure for this building. So I just used uh, steel uh, post to support steel uh, space frame on top. So the paper tube is just used as a wall. Uh, it's not the main structure, but it's receiving the wind to transform the wind pressure to the roof and the, the foundation. So we calculated and we tested the strengths to get the permission from the city. So it's not main structure. It was easier to get permission. There are 330 uh, tubes, and uh, uh, diameter is 53 centimeter, and length is 8 meter. Thickness is 15 millimeter, and some of the tube is bigger. At the diameter is 120 centimeter over here. Next, please. This is inside because of the air conditioning. Uh, I wanted also I wanted to invite the natural light through in between the paper tube. I had to close it because of air conditioning. So I put some very inexpensive uh, transparent uh, hose as a gasket to close the space, but the, the natural light comes in through the, the gasket. And uh, this is uh, the toilet made of paper tube. And the ceiling height of the toilet is 8 meter. So it has very good sound effect. <laughs> and uh, and uh, also, uh, in, case of, in case you finish with your, your toilet paper, you can tears, tears off inside the wall. <laughs> Next, please. Then also, I was asked to design the gate for the pavilion. And I knew uh, the gate is not category of the architecture. So I didn't have to get permission uh, for the paper tube to design the gate. So I just designed it. <laughs> and uh, so I, have been, I started working with a very good structure engineer uh, called Gengo Matsui. He's one of the, uh, he passed away. Um, this time, the, the, paper, the, the diameter is uh, 15 millimeter, thickness is 15 millimeter, inside is empty, and uh, this steel connection and uh, steel wire is uh, work as a post tension to connect the steel uh, joint with the paper tube. And next, please. Then uh, I was asked by fr a friend poet to make some additional space for his uh, library. And uh, I asked my client to make uh, the, the, this addition by paper tube. And uh, he knew I'm working with very uh, good structure engineer. Uh, and uh, he said, if that engineer said that this is OK for almost permanent, uh, he said, this can be built by paper. So I asked my 
uh, engineer, Mr. Professor Matsui, and uh, he, that time he was uh, age of 75. And uh, he said, this should be OK uh, as long as I live. <laughs> and uh, so I didn't introduce uh, my structure engineer to the, uh, my client. <laughs> and uh, I just told my client that my, uh, the, the uh, excellent engineer said uh, this is OK for his lifespan. <laughs> and although he passed away three years ago, this is still uh, alive. Uh, so paper tube is used for the, 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 uh, the post and beam and for the roof structures. Next, please. This time, the, the diameter of the paper tube is uh, 10 centimeter, and thickness is uh, 10, 10 millimeter. And I used the wooden connection. And also, uh, this is also post-tension structure to connect the wood joint and the paper tube. Next, please. I'm not using only paper tube. Uh, I wanted to gain, get the similar kind of the space, having light through the, the uh, in between the tubes. And uh, I so designing some complex building inside the city uh, where I cannot use a paper tube, uh, I, I found the very cheap material like uh, concrete piles, which is used usually for the underground foundation. And I just uh, put inside of the concrete foundation as a cantilever freestanding wall here. Uh, next, please. Then. I thought this kind of inexpensive factory-made uh, precasted pile can be used as a main structure of the, the, the building. Then I uh, luckily got the cl uh, client and uh, designing the uh, summer house on the hill. And uh, I didn't want to make, uh, I didn't want to spend so much money to make concrete uh, foundation to raise up the floor. So I just use a concrete pile. It's digged into the uh, uh, the ground a uh, few meter, and uh, supporting the, the wooden floor and the roof. And uh, so this rough surface of the precasted concrete is exposed inside of the house. Next, please. Um, this po uh, double glaze polycarbonate, this was built about 70 years ago before the polycarbonate the, the skin became the very famous, uh, very uh, popular. And this is double skin outside and inside. And the space in between the two double carbonated uh, panel is 10 centimeter. And I put the beans of the, the styrofoam as an insulation. But also the when the sun hit this wall, this translucent. Uh, it uh, invites some light through the, the, this wall. Next, please. Um, this is a train station uh, northern, in northern Japan for the blue train called Shinkansen. Um, I got only seven months of the construction period. It's very short and very tight budget. And again, when I studied uh, the soil condition, uh, soil condition was very bad, very weak. So usually we have to put soil uh, pile construction underground. But uh, I didn't want to use a pile because the construction period become very long. And uh, so because of heavy snow, um, I use a lot of the reputation of the PC concrete pile. Instead of using concrete pile underground, I use the concrete pile to support the roof. Because the 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 the, the horizontal uh, the snow load was divided in by the many post, the each post weight each post support support was less less than the uh, uh, limited of the, the soil uh, condition. So I could avoid uh, PC uh, pile construction underneath. And uh, I proposed to the city to make kind of a semicircular facade to, to receive the uh, plaza, and it was accepted. But the, from the mayor of the city, uh, I was asked to make some shallow bolted roof. But I don't want to just design what I'm asked. So I tried to uh, 
find uh, some kind of rational uh, relationship between the plan and the elevation. And because the, uh, the concrete pile is along the uh, semicircular, in center, the, 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 this uh, beam has the biggest span or uh, cantilever. And here, there are no cantilevers. So because the, 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 the height of the pile is the same, and depth of the beam is depending on the length of the cantilevers. Here is the big, biggest cantilever, so depth of the beam is the highest. And in the, the end, there are no cantilever, so the depth of the beam is very small. Then, so because of the different depths of the, the beam, the center of the building, the roof of the center of the building become highest and gradually makes a very shallow uh, uh, bolt, as the mayor asked. So this, the, I could find the, the rational uh, relationship between the, the plan and the structure and the elevation. And all that uh, space, uh, air-conditioned air space, is inserted, plugged in, inside of the glass box. Uh, inside of the, the main space, it's not air-conditioned. During the summer, the, the, the ventilation is make the room co cooler. And so the, it's uh, main smaller uh, air-conditioned space is double skin inside of the main space. And then, next please. Um, I wanted to put uh, the beam, uh, laminated timber beam, to show the shape of the, the bending moment. Um, however, the Japan Railroad Company uh, told me that for the blue train, I am not allowed to use uh, timber for the structure. Uh, so then uh, my idea was, if you see that uh, this beam very carefully, there's a line. This is uh, the, the, the line of the section of the, the steel plate, 16 millimeter. So when I calculate, uh, my structure engineer calculated the, the bending moment, this thickness is enough to support uh, bending moment. However, this is not like eye section. There are no flange. So uh, in plane deflection is very weak because it's just plain steel plate. So I put the, uh, the laminated beam both sides as a sandwich uh, to stiffen for the in plane uh, bending stiffness. And uh, because this uh, laminated timber is not uh, working to supporting for bending moment. This could be just small, regular, standard, uh, uh, small pieces uh, uh, connected by screw. It doesn't have to be continuous, big, expensive, uh, uh, the beam. So then I spoke with the uh, authority of the city. And uh, in Japan, the category of structure is only three, steel, concrete, and wood. And uh, because of the main force, like bending moment, is supported by steel plate. The authority said that uh, this have to be in category of the, the steel, although that this is almost look like a, the timber beam. And I told the uh, Japan Railroad Company that uh, the authority said this is a steel construction, and they are very happy to accept this idea. Next, please. This is a gallery for fashion designer Issey Miyake. And this is the first structure I built permanently by paper tube structure after I got uh, government permission. Next, please. Um, this is just the, the very simple space with paper tube and uh, shadow of the tubes. This shadow moves depending on the time of the day. And this curved wall has a space, very small space in between. And this space is the back of the, uh, the, the, this curved wall to invite thin strip of the, the light, and which also moves depending on time of the day. It's very beautiful. Next, please. Uh, this is my weekend house, where I go there once a year. Um, <laughs> I have to design this to, to get the government permission because nobody want to build the paper chip structure without this kind of permission, and nobody want to pay such a fee for the testing and getting permission, so I had to do by myself. Although I'm not the type of the person to enjoy the, the, the weekend life. 
And uh, so this is the first time I got the government permission by paper tube. Uh, there are 80 tubes, and uh, there are only 10 tubes in, uh, in 80s supporting the, the, the vertical force. And uh, each joint, I designed a cross-shaped wooden joint to connect the concrete foundation with the paper tube. So uh, there are no bearing wall inside the space. So all the horizontal force was taken care of by the cantilever, the paper tube. So each joint is uh, strong enough to, to receive 180s of the required horizontal force. So total 80 tubes support required all the uh, total uh, horizontal load. And uh, in between the tubes, this time it's just empty. It's just a space. And uh, in the du during the night, we can close by sliding door. But in the day, we can just open it. Next, please. This is the uh, inside of the space. Uh, this is just one space. And uh, you can close to the, the to make the, some bedroom here, and uh, back of the, this wall, the the, the, uh, the paper chip one one two hundred, hundred twenty centimeter diameter tube as used as a toilet. Next, please. Um, when uh, in the, the Greek structure, because of the their structure. Of I idea was very primitive. They can stack only stones, and uh, using stone as a beam, the spine is very small. So the diameter of the post is very big, and there are so, so many repetition of the post. That's why, the, because of the primitive structure idea and the, using the such a uh, weak material like wood for bending, uh, that kind of the, the, uh, the repetition and the size of the post made a characteristic of the Greek architecture. And uh, in paper tube, um, if I use the high tec technology nowadays, I can make a paper tube much stronger than wood. But I have no interest to, to make the stronger paper tube. My interest is using the weak material as the way it is. So because it's very weak material, it has to be this big diameter and this thickness. So we, I need a lot of paper tube. So that makes a characteristic of the, the space of the paper tube. Next, please. This is uh, the, the space I call uh, paper dome. Uh, this is a permanent structure for the, uh, the timber yard. This is a timber yard and some uh, workshop. Uh, the, they wanted to cover uh, the, the uh, yard by, by roof uh, from snow. Um, Length of the paper tube is uh, uh, about 150, and uh, the, the each module is 180 by 90 centimeter. This is a regular module of the Japanese plywood, and the joint is wood. Uh, joint has angle to make this arch structure. Uh, next, please. Um, plywood is uh, used uh, to get the uh, in-plane stiffness. And also, I made some hole to invite some natural light. And this wire cable is used only for the snow accumulations. Uh, next, please. This is a model of the Japanese pavilion for Hanover Export, year 2000. Um, the dimension is about, this is about 90 meter by 40 me 45 meter. And this is a corridor. Uh, I really like to keep it. Uh, today, my structure engineer, Michael Dixon from Bureau Hapro is here. And now we have problem of the, the cost. And uh, from my engineer and uh, uh, cons uh, the contractors, uh, try to take a lot of element, uh, but I'm still <laughs> fighting with them. And uh, I'm having very nice collaboration with uh, 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 my structural engineer, Bureau Hapert from Bath, and also my consultant is the Fry Otto in Stuttgart, Germany. And uh, this is a corridor uh, the, for the people to wait to get into the, the uh, uh, main exhibition space. Uh, this is the, just space is like a Issey Miyake gallery, 
And this is just the shadow and the light. And uh, one of the main our concept is uh, using recycled material. And also the after the dismantling the building, we like to recycle or reuse most of the, uh, the materials. So the, the, all the paper tube are made locally in Germany using recycled paper. And after the dismantled building, uh, the, my, our paper tube company buy use the paper tube to recycle again. And uh, also, in order to support this uh, paper chip post, we are using a uh, scaffolding foundation with sandbag to support this uh, post that can't deliver. And uh, so we are trying to avoid using a concrete, and we are trying to avoid uh, wasting material after dismantling the building as much as possible. And this is uh, the model 1 to 15 of the, this main hall. This is a paper tube grid shell. And uh, the each uh, diamond shape is one meter by one meter. The, the paper tube diameter is 120 millimeter. Next, please. Next, please. This is showing that the election procedure of our grid shell. First of all, we have to, this is a model of one to uh, 30. First of all, we have to put paper tube on the ground. Then we connect the paper tube and paper tube uh, by uh, the tape. And uh, we push from the bottom, we lift up uh, to make this double curvature shape. Next, please. This is the inside of the space. Um, in order to cover the paper grid shell, uh, because the, the our concept is a very e ecological thing, uh, regular main brain is made by PVC, which is, uh, makes dioxin. So, so I'm not going to use PVC main brain. Instead of using paper main uh, PVC main brain, I'm developing the paper main brain, which is good for water and the fire protection. And uh, this end wall, uh, diaphragm, is made by paper honeycomb board with a paper membrane. Next, please. This is another other project. I'm using paper honeycomb. Uh, this is a paper honeycomb and uh, space frame made by paper honeycomb with aluminum joint. And uh, the, the all the light comes through that uh, through that uh, paper paper honeycomb roof. Next, please. This is uh, as a project I'm working with the, with the Bureau of Hubbard. This is a small uh, museum near Dijon in France. Uh, this is the first stage of the project to cover all the boat by paper tube shelter. And this is uh, one of the uh, example of the, the different type of the joinery. We are still uh, uh, designing different type of the uh, joint to connect the paper tube. Next, please. This is uh, the, the project I'm working with uh, my friend Philip Gunnachang and uh, Stephen Spence. Uh, we are designing the, the, the local zone papillon inside of the Milanem Dome. I'm really enjoying it. This is the first time I ever co collaborated with somebody. And uh, there are so many uh, interesting happening and also so many, so many uh, uh, compromise, but it's a uh, part of the, 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 the enjoyment of the collaborations. Uh, and uh, so now that, that uh, they started making the, the uh, uh, some prototype of the paper tube uh, cladding, and so please come to the uh, 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 the Millennium Dome <laughs> beginning of next year. <laughs> next, please. This is a picture uh, taken right after the uh, Rwanda uh, crisis, 1994. And uh, when I saw this picture left hand side, I was really shocked because I thought Africa is a very warm country, but people are really freezing. And uh, I knew during the rainy season, um, 
the shelter they are given from United Nations are not enough to keep them warm. So this is a very simple uh, blue plastic sheet given from United Nations. And uh, I thought uh, I uh, without improving the shelter, uh, even the medical care doesn't work. So I thought that we have to improve the, the shelter. So I went to the uh, head office of the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees in Geneva to propose my idea of uh, uh, improving the shelter by using a paper tube. Next, please. This is left hand side. This is a typical standard refugee shelter. This is uh, the plastic sheet given by United Nations. And the first refugee has to cut trees to make a frame to, make, to put the plastic sheet. But here, all the trees are gone. Uh, over two million people became refugees, and uh, they started cutting trees for their shelter and the cooking. So it's become very serious uh, environmental problem and deforestation. So United Nations uh, once provided aluminum pipe to replace uh, trees. However, refugees throw them out for money and they cut trees again because aluminum pipe is a very expensive material in Africa. So United Nations was looking for some alternative material, but they couldn't find anything else. So uh, I was, uh, although I proposed my idea to make a better shelter, but it was rejected because of two reasons. Uh, first reason was their budget for each family is only 30 US dollar. And also the other reason was very important. Uh, they are not supposed to give them better shelter because if they give them better shelter, refugees uh, will stay there longer. So because of UN policy, they cannot give them better shelter. However, because of that environmental uh, problem, they are looking for some alternative material to replace wood. So I propose the using paper tube as an alternative material to replace wood. And then I was uh, hired as a consultant to develop this idea further. Next, please. Um, this is a three prototype of the paper tube shelter with a standard UN plastic sheet with a paper tube. And uh, we are testing for the, uh, the durability. This site is in uh, Sweden, uh, not Sweden, Swiss, uh, near Basel. Uh, you might recognize this is uh, the uh, furniture museum designed by Frank Gehry. This is a factory of the uh, Vitra. They are supporting our project. And then uh, uh, behind the, the, this uh, Frank Gehry's building, there are the Tadao Ando's seminar house. And next door, uh, the Nicola Grimshaw's <laughs> factory, and uh, uh, Alvaro Cesar's uh, factory, and also uh, Zaha's uh, fire station. <laughs> and uh, so they have, Bitra has an expensive collection of architecture. And uh, mine is uh, maybe cheapest uh, collection of architecture. <laughs> Uh, left hand side, this is a Bimba, Bimba camp in Rwanda. Now we are receiving the, the refugees from Congo in Rwanda. And uh, I installed my uh, 50 unit of the, the, the paper chip shelter for the monitoring uh, procedure. We have to see uh, the, the election procedure is easy enough for the refugees to build by themselves. Or we have to see how they uh, 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 treat paper tube. Uh, so this is half year of the monitoring stage. Next, please. So last February, I went to there to teach the, some leader of the refugees how to elect the, the uh, shelter. Then each leader goes to their group to build their own shelters. And it's very simple, just paper tube with some plastic uh, uh, joineries and uh, cable bracing and uh, UN standard plastic sheet. So I have to go back to see the result of how they uh, renovated their house by themselves. Next, please. So this is the last part of the, uh, the, the seminar se uh, lecture uh, about uh, the, uh, the project in Kobe. This picture was taken uh, right after the Kobe earthquake, January of 1995. Um, uh, 
especially I went to the area where the where poor community are, and uh, one of the, the Catholic church was destroyed by fire after the earthquake. And I went to this church because I knew there are many uh, Vietnamese refugees uh, is coming to this church. And uh, I thought that the minority people has the most of the problem, that kind of in situation. And uh, after I joined the morning uh, service uh, along the fire outside in the, in the site, I proposed the rebuilding the church by paper tube construction. But I was rejected again by priests. He said, uh, he said the remarkable thing that, that uh, without the uh, architecture, because he lost his uh, building, uh, without architecture, it's become real church. Because uh, now, without any building, the people having a really good morning ceremony and working together to help the community. And uh, he said that the building is not necessary to become church. And, uh, but I didn't uh, uh, give up, so I commute uh, to the, the church every Sunday. And uh, gradually, um, I got uh, along with the priests and uh, the other people. And uh, then the uh, priest said, uh, if I can build uh, the structure for, for communities as a community hall, uh, uh, they like to have a space by paper to, uh, if I can build if I can uh, get uh, the money, I, if I can find money by myself, and if I can find volunteer people to build by myself, the, the, the priest wanted to have a space. So I started this uh, project. Next, please. After the few months, this, is, uh, this picture was taken, uh, I think, in May or May. Uh, I visited the, the, the houses uh, of the Vietnamese refugees, not only Vietnamese people, but also Japanese people living in park like this. Even after three months, uh, people were living like this. Because the government uh, promised us uh, building uh, temporary houses right away, so I didn't want to build the, the temporary houses, so I went to went, uh, church to support the community. But uh, I knew that there are some reason uh, Vietnamese people, the most of the pre, uh, temporary houses was built outside of Kobe, and the Vietnamese people has only job in the city, and they cannot pay for the commuting. So they have to live here. Uh, but uh, when the rainy days, the inside, of inside floor is really wet, and in shiny, in fine days, inside temperature become over 40. So it's very unhealthy situation. So I decided to build temporary houses. Next, please. So this is the first uh, uh, prototype, which you can see uh, at the courtyard of the Hayward Gallery, uh, built by uh, the, the AS school student. Um, and this one, I used the, uh, the uh, plastic beer container. Because this house has to be very inexpensive and easy, very easy, have, uh, easy to build. But also, I wanted to consider about the situation after dismantling the building. So the, I wanted to use uh, most of the material, uh, it can be recycled or reused. That's why I used a uh, plastic beer container as a foundation with the plastic, uh, with sand back inside for the, for the weight. And uh, I asked the major Japanese beer company, Kirin Beer, to donate plastic beer uh, container with beer inside, but we are very disappointed to receive <laughs> uh, empty beer container. Uh, uh, in Hayward Gallery, we couldn't find a very good pr uh, plastic beer container, so we used the milk container instead, so it smelled of the milk inside. Um, so the wall is made by paper tube, and in between the tubes, uh, the waterproof sponge tape to keep the water out. Next, please. Even the roof structure is made by, made by paper tube with uh, the plywood joint. And this is almost completion with the house. And if during the winter, we can close the end wall to keep hot air inside, because also the, 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 uh, the main brain seating to make a double space. Next, please. And during the summer, we can open the gable to, uh, to get uh, the wind ventilations. Uh, during the winter uh, vacation, we built 
30 houses with a student. This is the inside. Next, please. This is uh, the, the, uh, the community space I call Pepper Church. And the size is 15, uh, 15 meter by 10 meter. And uh, all the, the door is made by polycarbonated uh, door. And uh, everything has to be uh, assembled by student. This is uh, the cross shape uh, wooden joint, which I got permission from the government for the county river uh, joint, which I use for my weekend house. And uh, so this is connected with the uh, concrete and paper chip, and all made by the student. Next, please. Because paper tube is lightweight, we don't need a heavy machine to assemble the paper tube. This is all the carried by student and inserted into the, the uh, uh, wooden joint. And the paper tube are connected by plywood uh, ring. And next, please. Then we hung, we used the, the uh, main tent for the roof. Even the roof, uh, even floor is made by student. Next, please. We spend uh, five weeks uh, uh, during the summer to complete this church, and all the door can be open to connect on inside and outside. Next, please. This uh, over is uh, uh, Roman uh, Bernini's church. This came from Bernini's church. This over and the, the paper tube space between paper tube become uh, uh, wider and wider to connect inside space and outside space. And this is uh, at the last of the end of the slides and uh, showing the first morning service uh, inside of the space after the earthquake after the eight months. Uh, 17th of uh, uh, September. And also we uh, built this as a temporary structure because the, the, the people love this uh, church, so this become, uh, became a permanent structure. And uh, as I said before, as an architect, I'm, I, also, I really want to make a monumental building, but uh, um, I really want to keep uh, working uh, for society. Uh, wherever I can use my own skill, uh, as long uh, as well as the, the making the, the uh, uh, nice architectures. Thank you very much. There's uh, still some enough time to uh, see advance to answer any question. Is there anyone who'd like to? This, you said the paper tubes are standard construction. They're not impregnated for outdoor uh, what, conditions. What do you mean standard construction? They're, they're just industrial constructions. That you have, they're not impregnated with special resins for outdoor use. Well, um, originally paper tube was uh, uh, manufactured as a concrete form for round post. So uh, already that they uh, manufactured had many experience of many way of waterproofing. So there are so many way of waterproofing. Waterproofing is not big problem. And uh, the every manufacturer had uh, the standard si diameter size of the paper tube in stock for the concrete form. But when I use the paper tube, I have to give them specs, uh, the thickness and the uh, length, diameter. This is kind of uh, semi-ordered uh, things, but it's very easy to, to order. So, but fire protection is more difficult, actually. Uh, wherever I can build the wooden construction, uh, depending on the size of the building, depending on the function of the building, also depending on the, the distance from the edge, 
edge of the site uh, wherever I can build wooden construction, I can use a paper tube. Also, the uh, Hanover project, uh, we are required from uh, German regulation to get uh, B2 uh, fire protection. And uh, we are planning to paint by what fire retardant paint, but uh, we are very happy that uh, our paper chip passed the uh, exam of uh, B2 regulation without any treatment. So it was okay. But it's not, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the, the almighty material, the, I don't think so. It's just depending on the function and depending occasion. Thank you very much for a uh, very inspiring lecture. And uh, you made uh, very interesting remarks on materials. And you said uh, you, you'd like to keep this paper roll, uh, uh, paper, paper tubes, as a you, uh, weak materials as it is to keep that uh, characteristics, rather than sort of strengthen uh, by using high, high technology, stronger than sort of uh, Greek structure. So, which means uh, um, if you keep this uh, char characteristics, wh what's the difference if you don't strengthen this material as strong as Greek temple or Greek architecture? So, which means uh, the sustainable period is different or shorter than Greek temple, or you want to keep it just uh, strong enough to fulfill the sort of the purpose of this particular building that's I like to ask. Um, maybe this question is about durability of the material. Um, if you take a look at Japanese old temples, many of them are built over hundred, uh, four, five or six hundred years ago. And uh, of course wood is very weak material for wood or for termite. And uh, so in Japanese architecture, we uh, invented very, very beautiful joineries to replace some damaged part. So although wood is very easy damaged by uh, water or termite, but uh, since by changing the, uh, the damaged part, building itself can remain forever. So even paper tube, uh, I don't know the, the, the uh, durability of the paper tube because I just started 10 years ago. And uh, however, because I, uh, we can change the, 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 the paper tube very easily because it's cheap and joint is very simple. So that the uh, durability of the material itself has nothing to do with the durability of the structure. That's why uh, although I'm doing the weather test for the, our building, but uh, actually I don't I'm not so serious about the durability of the material.
Um, I think everybody, uh, when they start their own practice, they suffer from big influence of their uh, professors or some, uh, some uh, the boss they used to work for. And uh, just uh, it, uh, manipulation of the geometry is uh, very important any, anyway as a fundamental way of design. But uh, just I have to find out what I'm good at it. Because the, uh, I cannot uh, compete with somebody something I'm not good at it. So um, I knew I'm very interested in, in material and structure. So, but however, when I started my own practice, uh, I didn't know how to think in structure. I didn't know the how to uh, take advantage of different materials. But uh, by meeting the uh, professor Matsui, um, he uh, uh, gave me a lot of opportunities to uh, find out my own uh, character or my own interest. Uh, because he didn't use any computer, because he's a very old person, he doesn't use computer. He just always calculated by hands. And by watching his uh, calculations, there are so many hints, interesting hints uh, I can use in design. But if I just work with the computers, we just put the tab we have to put the, the some uh, requirement, then we get received some uh, answer. The procedure is black box, so we don't get the the, the hint or some uh, interesting procedure in between. So that kind of the manual uh, way of uh, working in architecture was the uh, gave me a great opportunity. So that's why the, the working with the fly auto. Uh, it was my dream when I was a student, and uh, I think I have to train myself in be, uh, becoming the, the boss of the, the my own office. Uh, nobody give me hard time, so <laughs> besides the client, and uh, so I need somebody to give me hard time. Somebody I need somebody to train me continuously. And uh, so I always try to put me in hard position or hard condition. So uh, working with uh, Fry Auto uh, is really difficult. Not difficult, it's really fun, but uh, always uh, he gave me a lot of interesting idea. And also going to Kobe or Rwanda, it's really you know, uh, giving me hard time. But there are so many interesting uh, ideas can be gained from that kind of experiences. So just you have to find out the, the, what you are good at it. Uh, it takes time, but also it's very important to meet some uh, influential people to, f to, to find out your own potential. Um, if there's any other questions, maybe we would like to say um, thank you very much for very inspiring lectures and uh, probably before Millennium Dome will be completed next year, I think I'm sure we are have another opportunity to see him again. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.